Hey everyone, it's Lauren. Welcome or welcome back. Today I'm doing another chatty style video talking about every palette ColourPop has launched this year. I believe I was able to get them all, but you know, they have, I mean, the reason I'm doing this is because they have come out with so many palettes once again. I actually did this video um, last year as well. If you'd like to check it out, I'll have it linked below. But basically what I'm going to do is go through all the palettes ColourPop has launched this year and let you know my thoughts on them. Just very, very basic. I've only tried, I believe, one of the palettes that came out this year. So it's more just kind of my initial opinion looking at the palettes and letting you know whether I think it was really warranted or not because there is so much saturation in the makeup community right now I feel like there's constantly new things coming out and I feel like a lot of um, one of the brands that I feel like contributes a lot to that is ColourPop and I do want to mention that since the last video um, that I did like this ColourPop has like I believe it was in a documentary or something but they started talking more about the way that they produce all of their palettes and they do do it in a relatively I would say ethical way by coming up with the palettes and being able to create them within like two weeks time due to their in-house production that they have which allows them to create like lower stock and not create you know too much excess so they do it in I would say probably one of the most reasonable ways that you possibly could but I still think it's just a lot on consumers to constantly see new 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 all the time and I think it does take away a lot of the creativity that their palettes have when they're coming out so that's kind of the reason I wanted to do this video but I'm not at all like knocking Colourpop like I actually tried out their um pretty fresh hyaluronic um acid like foundation this morning I love it. There's so much I love from ColourPop, but I think it is always interesting to kind of add a little bit of commentary on makeup launches. So with that disclaimer being said, I have one more, and that is that um, I will be linking all of the products I mentioned today, if they're still available, in the description below. Now, I just want to say that any link that has an asterisk beside of it is an affiliate link. So if you purchase a product using one of those links below that has an asterisk beside of it, I can make a commission off of your purchase. It's no extra cost to you, but I do like to be as transparent as I can about that in all of my videos. And I also want to give credit real fast to the Instagram account where I'm getting these images from and where I got a large um, bulk of the information that I am going to be sharing with you all today and that is Trend Made One. I'll have her Instagram account linked down below but every single picture that is going on the screen today is from her Instagram account and I just want to give her full credit and everything like that so yes I think that is it. I know that was kind of a longer intro but with all of that being said let's go ahead and talk about all of Colourpop's palette launches in 2020. So the first launch came out on January 9th and this was their meant to be palette. It's $12. It's a nine pan green pastel palette. It came out with an entire collection of products as so many of these other palettes do as well. However, of course, we're only going to focus on the palette because if we focused on like all the other like kind of miniature items that come with it, we would be here forever. But this was a palette that a lot of people ended up comparing to the green palette they came out with, I believe in the beginning of 2019. And that was the Just My Luck palette. And personally, I think this one is pretty different um, just because this one is more pastel. I feel like it's more I hate to say it's more green bogus, but it kind of is. I feel like there's less variant shades. Like, they all are pretty much green. Like, it's a little bit more monochromatic. While the Just My Love palette was monochromatic, this one's, like, a level up. And I think that because it was different enough from the Just My Love palette, it made sense to come out with this type of launch. And I will say that looking at the two palettes side by side, yes, they are very different. And so, I think, honestly, I'd prefer this Mint to Be palette. So, this was one that I liked, but, of course, I didn't get because... I do not wear green that much to justify having an all green palette in my collection. So next we had two palettes that came out on January 16th. These are the Blush Crush palette which is $14 and is kind of a more blushing like nudes 9 pan palette and then also the Nude Mood palette which is also $14 but has more of like a warm tone nude color scheme and personally the um, Nude Mood palette does look a little too warm for me. I know a lot of people love the warm shades but I have enough in my collection and I'm kind of, I'm not steering away from them but I just don't see myself using them as much and I definitely don't need more and then with the blushing nudes I love the mauves I love the pinks this is definitely something that was calling my name but I also knew I didn't really need that much more in my collection but I do if like I had to choose between the two of them I definitely choose the um, blush crush the like more blushy toned palette because that just is me but I do think these two are still relatively different um you know from palettes that Colourpop has come out both before I think the launch makes you know a little bit of sense I do think it's a little close together obviously to the meant to be palette launch that was just 
I think a week before or a little less than a week but these were available at ColourPop as well as Ulta. Some of the launches are only available at ColourPop. I believe there's a few that were only available at Ulta but this one you could get it at both and I think they're still available as well. The next palette was launched I believe on January 23rd. I know that's when it was announced but I also think it came out that day. It's an Ulta exclusive that they came out for Valentine's Day as like a limited edition palette. It's not available anymore but this was the Yura Cutie palette. It's $18. You get 12 different shades with kind of like softer pinks and purples it's definitely more of like a pastel -y muted palette and to be honest maybe from another brand I would be a little bit more impressed but as far as Colourpop goes I feel like this is something they've done before it just kind of adds extra to like the industry that we really don't like didn't need and it doesn't even scream Valentine's Day that much to me like yes it has those pinks and purples but I honestly think there are palettes from uh, like this is a palette that would fit almost more for like Easter or some other time this one just looks a little too pinky like I don't know just a little too light for Valentine's Day I feel like I'd ideally want something more but don't worry they give us something another Valentine's Day palette in just a second that I feel like is a little bit more themed but also kind of unnecessary as well so the other Valentine's Day palette they had was the All That palette. It's an $18 palette. It came out on January 30th. It's got 12 different pans and it's mostly a red and pink palette. I would say it's got like 11 red and pink shades and then like this one kind of more, I don't know, like deeper kind of sparkly black shade. But other than that, it's a pink and red palette, which we have seen so much from ColourPop. And yes, I do think it kind of fits the theme of Valentine's Day. However, I feel like coming out with two palettes for Valentine's Day is a little bit overkill. I mean, when I think about like other holidays like that are a little bit bigger, it makes sense to come out with a few holiday palettes, like really just to capitalize on the holiday and the celebration. But as far as Valentine's Day goes, it's not the biggest holiday. So I get coming out with one palette, but two, just kind of a lot. And if I were to come out with, you know, one of the two, I would definitely choose this one. But this palette really is not that innovative. They market it as kind of like a sultry, they called it like a sultry red palette. I'm like, it's really not. It's really just the same pink and red palette you've come out with a million times over. So Colourpop actually took kind of a surprising break in between that All That palette, which came out on January 30th, and the Sailor Moon Pretty Guardian palette, which came out on February 20th. It's a $22 palette. It came out with a ton of other stuff in the Sailor Moon collection. And maybe I'm just out of the loop, but this palette was so hyped up. It really was like insane to me. I mean, for the initial launch as well as the restock, like everyone was talking about this palette. And I actually remember it not getting the best reviews. And despite this being a limited edition launch and palette, I believe it's still available. Like I definitely think you can still get this palette. It's just a 12 pan palette. Um, it's got some warm tones and a few pastels. And I actually do think that this is a pretty colorway. I think it's also pretty unique as well but I also think if this wasn't branded as like Sailor Moon I don't know how well it would do. Maybe it would do well because it's a little bit different. It's something that we really haven't seen before in general not just from Colourpop. So maybe it would have done okay but I think the main selling point obviously for this launch and that made it you know continually sell out is that it was branded with Sailor Moon. But I really can't blame them. I mean there seems to be a ton of hype. I think definitely collabing with Something as popular as Sailor Moon was a smart move as far as when it comes to like kind of lining your pockets. Like I think this was definitely a good move on Colourpop's part. Next a palette that really caught my attention is one of their nine pan palettes. It's the Making Mobs palette. It's $14 and this is one that's just um, nine pans of cool tone mobs. And I love mob shades. I love them. They're one of my favorites besides like the taupes. I'm definitely more of a basic girl when it comes to my eyeshadow. I like something a little bit more toned down and muted. And this is more of an everyday palette. I will definitely say that. This came out on March 12th and I I have to be honest I didn't get it then but I'm still very tempted and the reason is the color scheme is curated you know where I feel like it's not a giant palette like it's not overwhelming but I also feel like I there's some versatility to it there's a lot of looks that I feel like I cre could create with it like a very reasonable and decent amount for an only nine pan palette and I feel like the shades like I mentioned they're natural they're ones that I could wear every day which I do like and I also feel like that while this mauve color scheme has been done a lot in the industry I feel like they were able to also come up with their own version of it like without it being too repetitive without me feeling like I've seen it before like it's been done before like it still was very unique despite being not the most like you know unique color scheme if that makes sense like they were able to do something 
different with something that's been done before. So next up on March 19th, they came out with their Mulan collection, which their Mulan palette is $24. It's a warm tone red palette with some golds, a few kind of more cool tone shades, like one or two. It's a 15 pan palette. And this palette, I mean, honestly, I feel like the color scheme was relatively innovative. It's something I really don't think I've seen much in the industry, which is something pretty hard to do while still going with the theme of like a movie or whatever you're working with. Like, I feel like they were able to convey the movie's theme very well through these innovative colors, which I think is something definitely that um, can be applauded for because that is kind of difficult to do when you think about it, just tying in all those loose ends. And I feel, feel like they overall did a really good job with that. I also feel like I cannot, I mean, I definitely cannot blame ColourPop for collaborating with Disney as much as they do because they do have an agreement where they're able to create more on theme like packaging because they do have an agreement with Disney where it's less like a lot of brands because they don't have that agreement they have to kind of do off brand where it's kind of vaguely Disney but it's really like it does not look like something Disney would come out with where ColourPop has that advantage and I do feel like they really do take advantage of it um and I definitely cannot blame them for collaborating with Disney because I feel like whenever they do there is so much hype surrounding these launches this palette is still available um I know that it was limited edition or is limited edition but you can still get it if you're wanting it um I think that's you know kind of interesting sometimes where it's limited edition but you can still get it so and it's been out for you know almost nine months at this point maybe a little bit longer so yeah so two palettes came out under the celestial collection that ColourPop launched for their summer 2020 collection on april 18th the first one I never can say this. It's like a real tongue twister for me. It's the She's Got Solstice palette. It's $14. It's a nine pan warm tone palette. Um, it's got some muted creams and corals. And then the other one that they came out with was the All Things Equinox. And that's a nine pan cool tone palette. It has kind of your purples, your taupes. And I definitely prefer, I mean, like I've said, I love the taupes. I love the mauves. And the All Things Equinox definitely is more of like my preferred colorway. These are both limited edition, so they're no longer available. And personally, I think this was a very unnecessary launch. It wasn't innovative. It didn't really even fit summer. Maybe it was just because it was delayed a little bit and then when they wanted to initially, you know, launch this palette just because of everything going on in the world, these two palettes. But I don't know. I just did not think this was very innovative, like zero innovation. I feel like we've seen this a lot. And the color scheme while a little unique it just looked kind of off and not like something i would really i'm inspired to create looks with so ColourPop did take a little bit of a hiatus as far as production goes for a few months i think like two months there and they didn't come out with anything from that celestial collection until this tie-dye collection that launched on june 11th and i have to say this collection got a lot of attention when it came out with uh, when they came out with it, I feel like a lot of people were looking at it. There was a lot of hype surrounding it. And I can't say that that's a coincidence. I really do believe that because ColourPop had, you know, taken a little bit of a break, you hadn't seen much from them. You were excited to see what they were coming out with because it wasn't, you know, the everyday run-of-the-mill, like, ColourPop launch. Like, you were definitely seeing something a little bit different. And it's not like you had been bombarded with ColourPop launches for the last few months. Like, you were excited to see what they were coming out with because there had been a break in production. I really do think that's what had to do with it. So this launch, with, as far as like their tie-dye launch, it came out with three palettes. The first one is the In a Trance palette. The, um, that one's kind of like a bluey, pinky, purple palette. This was definitely my favorite out of the three. Uh, they also came out with the Aura and Out palette, which was kind of like a green and yellow palette. And this one, I would say, out of the three was the most unique. And then they had the Miss Bliss palette, which was a nine pan coral and pink palette, which we've seen a lot from ColourPop before. I don't think this was really innovative by any means, but these were um, each individually $12. So kind of a little bit less than their like monochromatic ones, which I think was probably smart, but people seem to really like these palettes. They thought it was very like on, like on trend because I believe uh, like, was that when tie-dye was like really popular? I feel like that was the phase of all of this where um, tie-dye was just incredibly popular. And so I think this launch was very fitting and I think the colors were pretty innovative as a whole. So I think this was a pretty good launch and I think it had to do with you know, there being a good break before it, but also it was more innovative than some of their other launches. Next on July 23rd, they came out with the Wild Nothing palette. It's a $18 palette. And to be completely honest, this looks the same as all of their other palettes. Like, it really looks absolutely no different. If you told me they had come out with this before, I would have believed you. Like, it just does not look any different. I really don't know what compelled them to need to launch this, like, palette and collection. I just don't get it. We're just going to move on because it's really like everything we've seen before. Next, on August 6th, they came out with the Garden Variety palette. This is a $20 palette. I think it's definitely fitting with the summer, like, 
the timing of the launch. I think it definitely is a summer launch. And I did really like the pops of color, but also like the earthy tones in the palette. I think this would be a good palette for people who are wanting to just now start dabbling into like um, more colorful eyeshadow looks. I think it's a good beginner palette for someone wanting to go into color. I think this palette's pretty, but I also think that it gets looked over because there are so many launches from ColourPop that it's like, oh, it's just another ColourPop palette. And I think that's where a lot of times this oversaturation of palettes does kind of do them a um, disservice as far as their launches. Next with their Sunflower line that came out on August 19th, ColourPop launched the Little Ray of Sunshine palette. It's a 14 dollar nine pan monochromatic palette just like a lot of their other ones and they did come out with a yellow monochromatic palette I believe in what was it I believe it was sometime definitely in 2019 but this palette I feel like is relatively different for a yellow monochromatic not only in the shades that they use because I do think those are pretty different from the ones in that honey palette that they came out with but I also think this is their first matte palette and I think, first off, the shades that they used for a yellow monochromatic matte palette were perfect. Like, I really do feel like there's a lot of looks you can create with it. I think there's dimension that can come with this palette, and I appreciate that. But I also think going with the more matte type of colorway is something that they probably need to do. They have to switch it up at some point. And I think this was a really good first starter nine pan matte palette. Next, on August 30th, they came out with the Candy Castle palette. This was their Candyland theme palette. It's $18, and this collection in general but specifically the palette had so much potential I mean really like people were so excited about it I feel like I mean I'm pretty sure they had an agreement with um Hasbro I can never say the name I believe they had an agreement with Candyland's parent company um so I feel like they could have done something really cool with this palette and I feel like it just kind of fell short of the expectations that I had for it as well as so many other people I don't know if it's because it was more of like a really muted kind of colorway um I don't know what it was, but I feel like the packaging was kind of, you know, a little less than the best. And I also feel like the colors were just a little, I don't know, even for me, even for this neutral girl, like they just weren't as cool as I think they could have been if there was a little bit more thought put into the palette personally. And I saw that this got really bad reviews. Overall, ColourPop's a very consistent brand as far as their formula goes. So for them to get like bad reviews on a palette means this palette really probably was not that great, which is surprising. And I does I think it overall hurts the brand's consistency and formula. So on the 11th of September, they came out with the Coast to Coral palette. It's a $14 nine pan monochromatic palette. You know, we've seen a ton of monochromatic chromatic palette so it is harder for them to be more innovative in the colorway however this one really wasn't that I mean I just don't think it was that special it reminded me a lot of the um peach palette that they came out with in 2019 I I know that peach and coral are similar colors, but I just, I feel like they still kind of made it a little bit more different from that palette. I think this was just kind of like a I don't know, like a sister or even more of like a twin, like not identical, but maybe fraternal twin to that peach palette. And I think it was just too similar to just by launching this palette. So ColourPop came out with a Hocus Pocus collection in the beginning of October. I believe it was like October 1st or 2nd. And the palette in that launch is called the Gather Round Sisters palette. It's $22 and people really love Hocus Pocus. So I definitely think this launch was warranted. There was a lot of excitement around it. Um, I've never seen Hocus Pocus. Um, so I don't know how well the overall theming of the collection was but from what I know and what I've heard about Hocus Pocus is this looks like something that's pretty fitting. I feel like the colors work especially for like Halloween um which is what I imagine a lot of people were kind of purchasing this for as well. Um I thought the packaging was definitely fitting for the movie with the three sisters on it or like the three witches but Overall, this was a color scheme that I know I wouldn't use very much, but I did think it was something innovative for Halloween while still being fitting for like Halloween and the movies theme. This isn't available anymore, but this got so much hype when it came out. On October 8th, they launched their That's Taupe palette. It's another nine pan monochromatic palette, but this one is like kind of a cool tone taupe brown palette, which is so up my alley. Um, it's $14 like the rest of them. And really like this is my favorite colorway that they've come out with for these nine pan palettes i've never tried any of them but this is one that i really want i thought not only were the shades that they selected beautiful i feel like i could create a lot of looks with it but also like the packaging like that snake print or like snake snake skin i really liked that too like it was chic but still different like 
I don't know. I really liked this launch and I'm still eyeing it even now. So next we have the one palette that I did end up picking up from ColourPop this year. It's the Stone Cold Fox palette. This is kind of like a sister to the Bare Necessities palette they came out with um, at the end of 2019. But this is a $34 palette. It's got cool tones. Not just brown cool tones, but like cool tones in general. Um, I don't know if I said it launched on October 22nd and this is one that I feel like really just met like what I was looking for in the industry in general but also from Colourpop because I knew it would be a little bit more affordable but I'm very into cool tones and I know a lot of other people are as well right now and so I feel like this was a really good way for them to kind of jump on that trend which they do a great job of doing in my opinion and I also think it was a really good alternative to people who were wanting the Natasha Denona Glam palette which I still really do want but they weren't wanting to spend like an exorbitant price tag like this is um I think almost half or less than half the price of that palette and so this palette definitely like fit that desire that I have for the Natasha Denona palette while I still want it this is a really good substitute I do enjoy it from the few times that I've used it I do want to try it a little bit more before I give like a full opinion on it but I do really enjoy this palette so far so another Disney collaboration comes out on October 29th it's the child palette which is their collaboration with the Mandalorian it's a $16 um I believe it's a nine pan palette and I think that you know people love like they love Mandalorian they love Disney plus like so this was very like a very smart launch on Colourpop's end I think it was a great way for them to kind of get the money um and all of that I'm not totally a fan of the color story but from what I know it looks like a very fitting color story and it's not one that we've seen from Colourpop before so I can say that next on October 30th they came out with the dark blooms collection and this has three different palettes in it the first one's the baroque palette and this is a $14 palette I believe all three of them $14 uh, this one was kind of like a cool tone gray and blue palette and this was definitely the most innovative out of the three palettes that they came out with. It is definitely something new from Colourpop so I can say that. Um, I think you know this was more this one palette the um, Baroque palette was warranted because it's something different. Now with the Ornate palette which is the warm red palette nothing new. I feel like we've seen it tons of times before. I don't really know where they saw the need for this palette but apparently they did because they came out with it um and then they also came out with the grandeur palette and this was kind of just a neutral dark brown palette really not much else to say about it I think the only one that was anything special was that first one the baroque palette next I want to talk about the raw beauty crispy collaboration that launched on November 12th this one um the main palette was the at foresight palette it's $20 and this collaboration was very smart on Colourpop's end because Christy is someone who is relatable, she's likable, there's so many things about her that I feel like people are really drawn towards, and she has so many, like, super fans. Like, I'm a fan, but she has so many, like, die hard, like, just stands for her. And so I think this makes a lot of sense. I imagine they, this was a very profitable collaboration that they did. They really didn't collaborate, I believe this was, like, one of the only influencers that they collaborated with for, like, something major this year, and I think if they were only to come out with one collaboration with an influencer, this was the right one to do it with. Um, I thought that the collaboration, as far as, like, the palette goes, was very fitting. Like, the theming of it, it felt very much like Christy. And also, the colors just seemed like colors she would use, but also fit with the theme that she came up with. So, I was very impressed with this collaboration in general. And I, I did think this was a justified launch, for sure. So, next, I'm probably going to say the name wrong of the collection because I just... I'm, I just know I am. It's the Amore collection, I believe, and there were two palettes that came out in this launch. Uh, it came out on November 19th. The palettes are called the Bourgeois Noir palette and the Menage à Moir, Moir palette. I'm sorry, I really am probably saying those wrong. They were both $18. The first one, the Bourgeois Noir palette, was kind of a more goldy palette, and the other one was more of like a mauve-centered palette, and while these are both pretty, they're nothing new. Like, they definitely did not need a collection. I don't really, like, I just, I don't know. Like, I feel like I've seen it before. It's pretty, but we've, we've been here, been there, done that. Thank you. Let's move on. Now, this was one that I feel like kind of flew under the radar, um, the launch of these two palettes. And I, I kind of don't understand why, because they're kind of fun, but they do go along with the monochromatic palette. So on November 23rd, they came out with the On Cloud Blue palette, uh, which is a $12 palette. It's very, like, it's a bluish, kind of lighter, kind of sky blue palette. It's pretty similar, though, to the Blue Moon palette, which I think, you know, just doesn't, it just means that this launch probably wasn't warranted or was a little too soon. I know the Blue Moon palette came out a little bit over a year ago, but even then, I just feel like it's a little too soon. Now, with the other one, the Cloud Spun palette, which is also $12, I was very drawn towards. It's um, a pink palette, but 
it's a little bit more muted like I feel like I would wear it a lot the shades that are in this palette like it's definitely something that's up my alley it's like pink but everyday wearable like I just I'm drawn towards it and I do think it was different enough from the ooh la la palette that they came out with at the beginning of 2019 um I feel like if you look at the color schemes like they are pretty different and I think it makes sense for them to come out with this more toned down pink palette also on November 23rd they came out with the big poppy palette and this is one that like they had a whole collection come out later on but the big poppy palette was uh, 14 or is a $14 palette it's a nine pan kind of monochromatic palette but this one is one of their all matte palettes and it definitely has a lot of like warm tones to it um I definitely don't think this was something we really like yes we haven't really seen it from Colourpop before but this is something I feel like we saw all the time in like 2016 these matte warm tone palettes I mean it looks on um, it looks very similar to the one of the um, palettes that Kylie Cosmetics came out with. Like, I just don't think there was a lot of need for this palette. Now, on November 26th, they came out with the Fade Into Hue palette, which I did talk about this in my um, new makeup releases for December, um, like, video. But this is a $34 palette, and I, I said I loved these colors, and I do. I, it's one of my favorite rainbow palettes I've seen on the market in general. Like, I love the color scheme. And I would have bought this palette if I had not already bought the She's a Rainbow palette from ColourPop. Um in 2019 and so the thing with me for me with this palette is I was kind of upset I was like oh I would have gotten this one because I like this one better but I actually ended up being kind of glad that I didn't because I watched a lot of the reviews and I haven't seen overall great reviews like I've seen quite a few not good reviews on this palette so I'm ultimately glad that I did not end up picking it up and I already have that one that I do enjoy from ColourPop already. On December 4th they came out with the Hello Kitty So Much Fun palette. I believe this is $16. It's a nine pan palette with like purples and pinks and I believe there's a few like corals in there too. This looks like something we have seen so many times from ColourPop and this really does make me believe that you know it's a collaboration with Hello Kitty and I think they were definitely relying on the collaboration in order to sell this palette. Next on December 17th they launched the Wine and Only palette. It's a $12 monochromatic palette I believe. It's kind of got like a burgundy colorway to it and to be honest I'm not typically the biggest fan of like burgundy deeper red type launch palettes just because I like them in the pan. I like them aesthetically but on my eyes they just it, it doesn't work. Um like I just don't love the way that it looks on my personal eyes but on other people it's beautiful. So like this is something that I gotta be honest, I was surprised by how much I was intrigued by this colorway, but I also know that when I was like kind of looking at the comments on Trend Mood and um, some of the reviews I've seen, like I've just seen a lot of people calling it boring. Um, so maybe it's just kind of my more everyday like muted kind of boring basic self that is why I ended up liking this one, um, but I know a lot of people were not very impressed. So I am pre-filling a little bit. You might even be seeing this I think in 2021, maybe the end of 2020, who knows, depends on how things lay out but there is a chance that more has come out I know I already got to like December 17th but who knows maybe they have come out with more at this point but that is pretty much it for their ColourPop uh the ColourPop 2020 palettes um I may have missed a few and I'm sorry if I did I really tried to get them all but from the ones that I mentioned I believe that is 29 palettes so almost 30 palettes launched by ColourPop in 2020 which I still think it's less than last year but I think it has a lot to do with like the couple of breaks that they took at, throughout the year which not only like makes total sense because of everything going on but also just in general like I really do think that their employees just because of how fast their production goes and just how much they come out with definitely makes sense I'm glad that they were able to have a little bit of a break just because that is a lot um but anyway that is it for today's video I hope that you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on ColourPop launches if you did I'd really appreciate if um you give this video a thumbs up so I need to do more videos like this in the future I'd honestly like to do like analysis that's 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 a um an elevated word like that's not what this is but I would like to do videos on other brands like their launches from throughout the year um so if you have any recommendations um on brands that I should do for that definitely let me know in the comments below I'd love to hear your thoughts as well as your thoughts on these launches from ColourPop this year um I love hearing from you guys so anything you have to say just let me know in the comments but with that being said, thank you so much for being here. I really, really do appreciate all of your support and the time that you, like, devote to me and my channel. It really does mean so much. Like, you being here just means so much to me. So thank you so much. I hope that you have a great couple of days until my next video is uploaded, and I will see you when that video goes live. Bye.